Okay, here we go, everybody. Let's get to it. So we have an aluminum alloy tube with an outside diameter of 3.5 inches and a wall thickness of 0.3 inches. Okay, so it's hollow. Good to know. It's used as a 14-foot long column. We're assuming that our modulus elasticity is 10,000 KSI. Okay, I've got a lot of good stuff here. And we have pin connections that are used at each end of the column. So how are we going to solve this? Well, we're going to try to find the salinity ratio and the Euler buckling load for the column. Perfect. That's not too bad. Now, if you want to, I don't think I give a picture for this one. So just draw yourself a picture. It's 14 foot long and it is hollow. Okay. It's three and a half inch diameter. And the wall thickness, I know this isn't pretty, is 0.3. Give yourself some sort of picture. It will help when you're doing these problems. So let's solve it now. First off, I need to calculate my moment of inertia. How do I do that? Well, we have pi over 64 times our diameter to the fourth. That is the moment of inertia for a circle. However, this one is hollow, so it's more or less like we're taking a full circle and we're subtracting out the moment of inertia of the inner circle to get our overall moment of inertia. So that's why we have this minus sign right here. If you wonder where the 2.9 comes from, that is because we have the wall thickness being subtracted from both sides. And I'm back. There we go. So I have 0.3 right here, and I have 0.3 right there. So 0.6 from 3.5 is 2.9. Okay. What's the next step? I really shouldn't have done those dots. <laughs> Now we need to find the area. Why are we finding the area? Because remember, our slenderness ratio is L over R, and R squared is equal to I over A. So we have to find the area and the moment of inertia to be able to calculate this. So area, we're once again just using a simple equation. Area of a circle is equal to pi over 4 times the diameter to the fourth. Oops, wrong one. Sorry, sorry. Diameter squared. And so that's what we have here. We have the outer circle right here, and we're subtracting out the inner circle. Then finally, we can calculate our um, R for the slenderness ratio. It comes out to be 1.136 inches. That's like an effective radius. We want to give it a, a term here. Okay, now with that, we have our R, so it's really easy to calculate slender in this ratio because we have our length, which is 14 feet, and we have our R, which we already calculated. As a note, when you're doing the slenderness ratio, you have to make sure you're being careful to convert to the same units. The slenderness ratio is unitless. So I had feet on the top, I had to convert that to inches. I could have also converted R to feet. It would have worked out fine either way. Just make sure you do it for one or the other. Okay, so we have the slenderness ratio, that's great. Now let's find the critical stress. Or sorry, the critical buckling load. So we're using this same equation right here. Um, as a note, the equation has n squared in it, and we're just saying that n is equal to 1 because it didn't mention any supports. If it had said that the um, column was supported at the middle or something, then we'll have to remember that. Jump ahead with me. I would have to remember that it would be n equal to 2, and I would have to keep on going up. So didn't mention any sort of supports, so we're just going to say that n is equal to 1, 1 squared is still 1, and so I have just pi squared ei over l squared. So I have all these values, I plug them in, and I get that this will fail at 13.62 kilopounds. And that's it. So thank you all for listening, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.